Welcome to the Atlantico podcast, where we talk about the science behind the Atlantico project, the Atlantic Ocean, and the human adventures experienced along the way. Here, we have conversations with guests from around the world who work together so that we can better understand, manage, and protect the ocean. So let's embark on the journey of Atlantico and discover the world that lies above and beneath the surface of the beautiful Atlantic Ocean. Welcome back to the Atlantico podcast. In today's episode, we are discovering another project which is supporting the implementation of a science diplomacy initiative at the Atlantic level and is focused on improving our understanding, management and protection of our common resources, the Atlantic Ocean, from a research and innovation perspective. Our guest today is Sofia Cordero, the coordinator of a coordination and support action called ANCOR, which is a project funded under the Horizon 2020 program of the European Union. So let's meet our guest and discover what ANCOR is about. Welcome to the podcast, Sofia. It is a pleasure to speak with you today. Hi, Eloise. It is also a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you very much for the opportunity and congratulations for this excellent science communication initiatives targeting the general public. We should never forget that research and innovation should always have societal outcomes. Thank you for these words, Sofia. And as we do with this episode, I'd like to start by asking you a little bit about yourself. So can you tell us where and how your connection with the ocean started? And can you also share with us what your journey leading to where you are today has been like? Well, I've always lived near the sea. So there is an emotional connection with the ocean since I was a child. The academic linkage only started when I started studying biology in the Faculty of Sciences at Lisbon University. However, believe it or not, I've chosen to develop my studies in plant biology more specifically in plant photosynthesis. Well, kind of different of what I do today. So I ended up working in the ocean when researching for my second job after my PhD. At that time, I knew very little about ocean issues, except what I have learned at university. My teachers have been the institutions where I worked and engaged every day. And of course, those I've met along the way. And here, I cannot forget the incredible Professor Mario Ruivo, a preeminent ocean scientist and ocean diplomat in Portugal. And well, today, I coordinate the ocean program at the Portuguese Foundation for Science and Technology. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's always interesting to hear about everybody's journey because they're all different. And, you know, although they all end in the field of marine research, it's good to hear that you don't have to start in that way to end up here. Exactly. Yeah. Now, if we turn to Angkor, the, the project, I want to first explain that while a few of the past episodes we have talked about other research and innovation projects, your project is slightly different. Uh, it's different in the sense that it is not funded to perform neither research nor innovation, but it is there to support the implementation of a science diplomacy effort. It's called the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance. But before we get into the details of the project itself, I would like for you to set the scene. So maybe if you could tell us about the context and the specific challenges within which you're working. So in summary, what are the needs behind the project? Well, we all know that the ocean is of crucial importance for the world, for ourselves as human beings in our society. And it is because it has a rich biodiversity it acts as climate regulators. It offers good food security, so at the end really impacts our everyday life. However, due to an expanding global economy, the ocean is under increasing pressure. And we are all seeing that with the different COP meetings and the last one has ended in November. So the need for a sustainable use of ocean resources is widely acknowledged, as well as the need for a healthy and active collaboration to better understand the ocean. And to best unlock its secrets and to sustainable manage the Atlantic Ocean as a whole, 
cooperation is really the basis. And this was the motto for the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance, which is a science diplomacy effort that starts in 2013. Basically, we have the policy makers discussing and finding the tools that are needed to implement certain activities for a common good. So this effort, this science diplomacy effort, started in 2013. And it was linked with the international dimension of the European Union Atlantic Maritime Strategy, which was launched in 2011. So since 2013, several Atlantic countries joined to this common endeavor to the benefit of our societies. And currently, there are seven Atlantic countries along and across the Atlantic Ocean, plus the European Union, working together for improving our understanding, management and protection of the Atlantic Ocean through science and innovation-based solutions. We are speaking about, and in alphabetical order, Argentina, Brazil, Cabo Verde, Canada, European Union, Morocco, South Africa, and the United States of America. So really an encompassing collaboration. In terms of the project itself, the project has been funded to support the implementation of this cooperation focusing on three pillars, connecting, acting, and cooperation. And we are not doing this alone. There are a huge a number of research and innovation projects that have been a focus of this podcast, which are also contributing to this alliance in the implementation side. So for Anchor itself, which is a coordination and support action, as you said, Eloise, not a research project, the first challenge that we had ahead was the creation of an Atlantic community on research and innovation, who knows each other and more than ever trust each other work. So the countries along and around the Atlantic Ocean are quite diverse, and this diversity is sometimes an obstacle for long-term collaboration. That is why this trust building is so important. So the second challenge that we had uh, was to identify common activities to put in place using existing resources. So really the end is not to invent the wheel on the tools and neither on the institutions, but to invent the wheel on the way we cooperate. Really to demonstrate the power of co-designed and co-implemented cooperation. The third challenge was to support the implementation of the identified activities. We all know that the different institutions have their specific objectives and this is an add-on to their current activities. So it is important that we support the starting phase of these activities that can be developed together. And the fourth and last change is how to sustain this cooperation. Because if there are no more funds, everything that we have done ends. And that is not really uh, the idea. So these are the four main challenges that we have in scope of the ENCO project supporting a science diplomacy effort. These are by no means small challenges to uh, to tackle for sure and uh, I'm eager to know how Angkor is addressing those challenges and how your objectives and activities are contributing to to achieving that. So really all, all our activities aim to connect the people in, in first place. So to address this first challenge that I've spoken about, that is a promotion of the community around the Atlantic, what we did, it was to establish a regional, thematic, stakeholder and gender balanced working group that we called the Atlantic Multi-Stakeholder Platform. Really here, we had a group of experts that worked for one year and a half with the aim to identify ocean-related existing initiatives in the Atlantic area, really building up in what we have, which are relevant for the Atlantic Corporation. They have also identified the gaps and needs and proposed joint pilot actions to be implemented. The identified ocean-related initiatives are included in the database that is accessible for everyone in our website, and it aims to allow that the Atlantic community knows each other and really understand what is doing what. In terms of the second challenge, 
the identification of the common activities to put in place using the existing resources. After following the co-design process that I have just spoken, uh, we have identified or the experts, really it's an expert-driven activity. They have identified six joint pilot actions and those are now currently being implemented at the Atlantic level. They focus either on cross-cutting cooperation areas or thematic areas relevant to strengthen research and innovation in the Atlantic Ocean, always with the aim to benefit the Atlantic society, every one of us. So there is one joint pilot action on capacity building. They have, all of them, as you may imagine, uh, acronyms that I will not mention. So I will just <laughs> focus on the areas where they act. So the one joint pilot action is on capacity building that aims to create workshops, summer schools, and floating universities for the benefit of early career scientists and technicians in ocean science. And in fact, in December, there are several meetings of these giant pilot actions taking place, really to promote further activities in scope of this cooperation on capacity building. So there are six I have spoken about one. The other is pilot action on data sharing and management that aims at creating one-stop shop user-friendly transatlantic platform for gathering natural, social, and social scientific data. So really not scientific as such, but more encompassing data to, to develop this portal. One of the other pilot actions, it's on infrastructure sharing. Infrastructures are crucial to develop research. And really here, what we aim is to promote the transnational access and other methods of sharing infrastructure in the Atlantic area. So really it's to identify which are the infrastructure that exists, where they are in certain times, and this knowledge will allow other projects, other institutions to see if they can use these infrastructures and how they can use them in order to take the most of their presence, mainly at sea, because it's very, very expensive to have infrastructures at sea. So one of the other pilot actions is on ocean literacy, which is crucial. And this pilot action aims to connect schools from the Atlantic countries to promote ocean literacy and society awareness. And here, the most important, because the Atlantic Ocean is very diverse, there is ocean literacy blue schools. There is no geographical, cultural, or social or language boundaries. So everything that it's done, for example, at this pilot action has been translated in several countries along and across the Atlantic Ocean. So this is very important really to address ocean literacy issues in our communities. There is another one on aquaculture, and this one is thematic. It's not really on cooperation, cross-cutting cooperation. It's a thematic pilot action. And here, the, the idea is to consider the steps required in the design, implementation, and management of a multi-stakeholder platform across and along the Atlantic Ocean, so an all-Atlantic aquaculture platform. And the final joint pilot action is also thematic. It deals with marine biotechnology, which is a very important area in order to take the mouths of the organisms that live in the sea, but at the same time using this resource in a sustainable way. And in this pilot action, we aim to develop new and emerging technologies intended to improve human health through marine biotechnology. So the joint pilot actions are creating networks through the organization of meetings, workshops, courses, technical training activities, developing one-stop shop portals, signing terms of reference for collaboration, developing roadmaps and plans. So the activities are quite diverse. Important to note is that the majority of the joint pilot actions took during the pandemic. And this, everything that we did, I believe it is a great achievement. And in fact, this has led to the winning of the Atlantic Project Award that was uh, received last uh, December 1st in scope of 
the Atlantic Stakeholders Platform Conference. So the idea of the joint pilot actions is that they are long-term activities. As I said, we don't want to start something that then ends after the project ends. So to achieve this, we also need to provide the seed funding in order that these pilot actions can, can contribute. But the idea of the joint pilot actions is that they are long-term transatlantic activities. And to achieve this, we also need to support them in the first stages of the implementation, uh, really tackling the third challenge that I have spoken before. And here what we are providing is some seed funds in order the joint pilot actions, the stakeholders engaged in the joint pilot actions can uh, start implementing. But of course, we also need to think on the future and think on ways to continue the cooperation that has started by using the tools and funding mechanisms and by identifying implementing institutions that have the capacity to take forward this common endeavor. And this will allow us to contribute to the fourth challenge that I have mentioned and really to sustain the cooperation that has started. There are also two other things that I would like to mention here. It's the activities that we are doing really to face these challenges and uh, the challenges of the Atlantic cooperation. As I said, we are not alone. There are several research and innovation projects contributing to the same endeavor. So we need to highlight the importance of creating synergies, of working together. And here, for example, we have today the Atlantic projects that are working and developing quite a number of actions in order to support the Atlantic Ocean Research Corporation and with whom we are trying to create these synergies with the joint pilot actions. In addition to creating synergies, I also would like to mention that it's important to train in the future generation. And this has been one of the activities we have been doing in scope of the project. And when I mean the future generations, I mean spe especially the early career scientists. And in scope of the All Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassadors Program, the UNCO project is contributing to this training of the future generation. And this is being doing through trainings, seminars, and other communities, really giving them the tools and contacts to become the drivers of change in their communities. Quite a lot of information to take in. And I have to say, firstly, congratulations on winning that well-deserved award. Uh, you have played a, a great part in implementing you know, the, that support and the coordination of all the activities at the Atlantic level. So well-deserved award and congratulations again. And then you mentioned, you just mentioned the Youth Ambassador Programme. And we're happy to say that in the new year, we, we will have uh, a first series of podcast episodes with three of your Youth Ambassadors representing, you know, South America, Africa and Europe perspective. So make sure to, to come back and listen to those. And if we go back to Angkor, you started four years ago in October 2018. So can you tell us about the main achievements of the project so far? So I'm sure there's so many achievements in the last four years. So uh, I'll uh, maybe ask you to, to concentrate on really the main achievements. Yeah, I, I will also only mention the main four. I would say on top of this is really the main achievement of the project is to connect the Atlantic community in ocean research and, and innovation through the co-design and co-implementation. If I had to choose one, this would have been the main achievement. So if I specify uh, how we, uh, we achieved this and which were the achievements that contribute to this, we can say that we have connected in these four years we have already connected stakeholders from at least 18 Atlantic countries. It's a big number of, of countries that uh, we are connecting. And not only stakeholders from academia, but also industry, international stakeholders, European stakeholders, national uh, institutions, and uh, civil society, including the youth, general public, and NGOs. Another achievement was identification of more than 800 existing initiatives in the Atlantic Ocean that can contribute to this common endeavor, really start building on these initiatives instead of creating something new and put them working uh, together. So this is an achievement and this is just 
the tip of the iceberg. There are many, many other institutions and initiatives in the Atlantic Ocean that can contribute to this common endeavor. We have also launched and funded the six transatlantic pilot actions and they address some of the 56 gaps and 79 needs recommendations that were identified in this co-designed process. And we have also trained 50 plus youth ambassadors from countries across and along the Atlantic Ocean. So these were the four main achievements. There will be more because the joint pilot actions are still running and are, they are very active now because the pandemic is allowing now for physical meetings. So we will only re really have a clear picture on all the achievements at the end of the project. But what I can already say that the pilot actions are already contributing to creating synergies among Atlantic initiatives, encouraging new models of cooperation on a coordinated and partnership-based approach, and promoting joint activities, increasing the operational efficiency within marine research. So a lot of achievements indeed, and some efforts that are really needed to make sure that, as you say, we don't reinvent the wheel, we don't create new initiatives when there are already so many existing ones. And uh, we can just join forces and learn how to collaborate together in the vision to, you know, achieve that common goal and uh, for the good of everybody around the, the Atlantic Ocean. Actually, the, the ANCO project will end quite soon in March 2023. So what is still to happen in the next few months? And also, can you tell us what will happen after the project ends? Well, yeah, Louise, you're right. We are in the final 100 meters, so we really need to, to speed up and really showcase all the achievements that we are able to, to implement. So in the next month, we will continue to support the implementation of the joint pilot actions, which is one of the main outputs uh, of the project, and promote their achievement, disseminate their, their achievements. We are also developing two of the most relevant reports of the project, one dealing on the implementation plans for the joint pilot actions, because as you said, they will not end after the project ends. They are long-term activities. And the other report, it's on dealing with the recommendations for the sustainability of the activities that have started in scope of the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Corporation. So these two reports will provide food for thought for the governance level of this cooperation and really guiding the activities in the next year. So I would say that the last months, this last 100 meters are very exciting. After the project ends, it is expected that its legacy will continue to the joint pilot actions. The colder enthusiasm around them is incredible. And it's not only because they feel that they are making something new and impactful, but also because the joint pilot actions are already contributing to something much bigger than themselves. That is a sustainable use of the Atlantic Ocean for the benefit of our societies. In addition, this process is supporting a science diplomacy effort. So its legacy will continue to be supported by the governance board of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. We aim to promote a long-term sustainability of the ongoing activities. The ANCO project is just a drop in the, the ocean of, of this cooperation. So I'm pretty sure its legacy will be continued. And we look forward to contributing to it in the long term as well. So to finish on, I'll ask you just how can people know more about the project and all the activities, everything that is still coming up, you know, in the next few months, loads and loads expected to, to be disseminated. And how can they keep up with, with your progress and the future activities of the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance? So we do have a portal, but it's not a project portal, as normally we have for uh, research projects. We have developed a portal that aims to promote the activities of the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance, so the science diplomacy effort that is behind all this cooperation. You can know more about the science diplomacy activity in the portal www.allatlanticocean.com. 
And here you have information on the past activities, on anchor activities, and the next activities that will continue after the end of the project. There are also social media networks where everyone can know in a more digestible way what are the project and the alliance activities. And we do have a presence in Facebook and, and in Twitter. Yeah, so a great ways to, to know what's going on, what's going to happen. And as you say, we, we expect some more support from the European Union to carry on those activities and make sure that we all collaborate around the Atlantic. Not only the European Commission, because this is a transatlantic cooperation. So it really needs to, to have support from all the countries uh, engaged and that have supported the declarations behind this, this effort. Yeah, all these declarations that we spoke about in, uh, actually, we had a conversation with Sigi Gruber, who explained all these different declarations that we're all contributing to. And rightly so, we need the support of everybody around the, the Atlantic Ocean to make sure that these efforts are kept up and sustainable uh, in the future. Sophia, thank you so much for this conversation today, for taking the time of explaining what uh, you are doing and the challenges that you are addressing. And congratulations again on all these achievements and maybe good luck for the last 100 meters. Thank you very much, Eloise. And thank you also for the kind invitation to participate in the Atlanteco podcast. <laughs> We hope that you've enjoyed today's episode and look forward to seeing you next time. You can follow the Atlantico project on our website on www.atlantico.eu and you can also find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. All the links and information on the project and on today's episode is in the show notes. Atlantico is a project funded under Horizon 2020, a European Union research and innovation programme. 